Okay, so this is my video over Pythagoras and Xenophanes. So the points that are reconstruction reconstructed in Golden Verses uh, for Pythagoras is that, first of all, there's a lot of instances where he shows things being um, governed by reason. So, like, people are supposed to, um, at the end of the day, think about what they did and whether or not that was a good thing or a bad thing and, you know, to reward themselves properly for that and everything. Um, this is because it's very important for them to think through every little thing that they did throughout the day. Uh, so you can see that reconstructed. Uh, you can also see that they're not afraid of death, and then he's like, you know, never, um, like, recognize that it's a part of life, I think. Um, that's, like, really important and done again. Um, and then also the part where he mentions living uh, without luxury. He's like, live cleanly, but live without luxury. That ties into that whole no extremes sort of thing. Um, which, if I remember correctly, was part of the general, like, Greek um, ideas of philosophy was that you were supposed to have, like, intemperance, I guess. Um, when you talk about Xenophanes, his points are, um, first of all, he believes that the way that the gods are portrayed are not necessarily as pious as people believe them to be, um, meaning that if the gods are really so much above humans, then why do they look like humans? Why do they act like humans? Why do they do things that are, um, you know, seen as sinful or vice you know, filled or whatever. Um, so because of that, he kind of believes himself to be, like, more um, respectful to the gods <laughs> because he actually sees them as that rather than seeing them as um, beings that look like humans or beings that um, mess up in the way that humans do. Um, he also mentions the water cycle, kind of, um, in his little interpretation of it, and he mentions that the earth and water is, like, where everything comes from. Um, I'm also taking the philosophy class, like, the Greek philosophy class, while I'm taking this, um, just Greek history class. So, um, this is something that a lot of philosophers do, and really, um, the important thing about it that's, like, in a point that I put for Xenophanes is, A, he's listening to other people because Thales... Um, which is another pre-Socratic, he talked a lot about how everything comes from water, and B, it shows that they're observing the world around them. So Xenophanes is showing that he has this idea of reason, and he has this idea of, like, going from point A to point B to point C and everything, because he's, like, looking at the world around him and trying to figure out how it works. So everything he says, whether or not it's scientifically correct, um, is something that he's come to because of a thought process, and so that's, like, a really important thing, uh, especially when it comes to early, uh, early philosophy. Um, and then he also makes the point that philosophy is, like, a worthy cause, um, as in, like, it should be just as held in esteem as if you were, like, um, winning in a war or things like that, um, which is kind of ties into, like, if you do this, then your life will be, like, kind of better, I guess, um, because living your life with reason will make sure that you're doing, like, a lot of things more correct than you would be if you weren't thinking with reason. Um, so yeah, similarities and differences of both. So, Pythagoras seems to just kind of accept the Greek Parthenon as it is, um, and in fact bases his cult um, over Apollo, whereas Xenophanes is, is questioning the religion around him and questioning how these things are working and everything, which later gets him called an atheist. Um, also, they... This is my notes. Um, both have ideas of reason. So, like, uh, once again, Xenophanes sees it in nature and things, and also how he makes his um, claims, you know, like you can see him claim it seemingly over and over, but really he's going, it's like, you know, geometric proofs, basically, going from one to the other. Um, same thing with Pythagoras, constantly, you know, talking about, like, you should live your life with reason, and here's why, and everything like that, so that's very important. Um, also, um, Xenophanes was not necessarily somebody who had, like, followers in the sense that Pythagoras did, because Pythagoras had an entire, like, you know, uh, special cult, but um, Xenophanes does believe himself as a bit above other people simply because of the way he sees um, the, like, because of the, like, pious comment of how he's like, I am more respectful to the gods because I see them this way rather than seeing them in their viceful ways. Um, and also because, um, as he mentions in his thing, that, like, um, 
being a philosopher in and of itself is an honorable way of life. And so because of that, he's kind of, you know, so I thought that was just a little thing that made them kind of similar. Um, so the details of actual Greek life that you can see in just philosophy is first of all they're starting to look around their world and trying to figure out how it happened and you can kind of see them moving away from making everything so mythological and trying to actually like you know go from one thing to another. It's not necessarily experimentation quite yet but you can tell that they're sort of um, moving away from everything being a part of religion which I think is really important. Um, interesting to think about. Also, um, you can kind of see a hierarchy set up by Pythagoras and what he thinks, you know, you should honor first and second and third. So first he talks about, you know, like the gods and then you've got the heroes and then you've got regular men. Um, and I thought that was interesting to kind of show like, you know, what they believe has power over just the men that rule and everything. Um, they also talk about having glory in battle and knowledge and how both of them are like perfectly good pursuits. Um, which is part of Greek culture because, you know, you need to have um, a leader usually who is very good in a military sense, but also good in speaking and everything like that. So I thought that was interesting. Um, also, in um, Xenophanes' stuff, he has listed, like, what you should ask somebody just to make small talk. Um, one of that is, what is your family? And I thought that was a weird way of wording it. But it draws attention to the fact that um, Greeks at this point really saw, like, their family and their, like, you know, like, what family they came from um, as, like, a legitimate and important part of their identity and so I thought that was really important to see and like even just in small talk um <laughs> you know it's very important to say okay who are you and then where are you from but their version of where are you from is what is your family so I thought that was really cool um yeah so my reactions to this um since I'm already taking the other uh philosophy class I think it's interesting to see how all of this ties in because um Xenophanes and Pythagoras are kind of like middle like early middle philosophers you know because there are a few uh, before them or near their time um it, it was really interesting to me because Xenophanes is usually seen as like um just the guy who always talks about um like gods and goddesses and how they're supposed to look and everything and how he considers himself more um pious than everyone else and um Pythagoras from what we did in our philosophy class didn't really like he had a lot of things that he was like you have to do this and this and this and this and this to be part of our like little cult or whatever and when I was reading the fragments from that class usually he didn't have um much reason behind it so these two excerpts that we have are like interesting to me because they like kind of fill in some of the blanks of that and everything um also i think it's interesting that they see um the natural world as part of like how they think as well like it's weird to say but like they've got their what's in their mind and then what's around them in the world to them you use the same thing to understand it so you're still using reason for all of it regardless of if it's just something you're thinking about or if it's actually like the physical world around you so that was always really interesting to me um yeah i think that's pretty much it i absolutely love listening to what other people think so yeah